Good morning, SDF kids. I'm so glad you're here today because in this episode, we're gonna be sharing about the greatest story ever told. It's so amazing, it's so life-changing, it's so incredible that you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. It's Easter Sunday and it's time to celebrate. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Oh, hey kids, it's your girl Whitney here. But today you can call me Easter Bunny. Get it? Because it's Easter and I'm a bunny. Oh, never mind. One problem though, there are no eggs around here. How can we have Easter without any eggs? Can someone please bring me some eggs? Oh, there we go. That's so much better. We are gonna have so much fun today that I can hardly contain it, but I have to and I can, so I will. Here we go. 
Today is an extra special day because it's Easter! The day the Easter Bunny was born! That's why we're celebrating today and that's why we're going to be talking about all day long. I can't wait to talk about it. I have been celebrating it my whole entire life. Hey Whitney, I hate to tell you this, but that is not what Easter is all about. Ah, uh, I'm pretty sure that it is, but it's okay to be wrong, Jenna. It happens to the best of us. But I will say, this is pretty embarrassing for you. I'm not embarrassed, and I definitely do know why we celebrate Easter. We're celebrating Jesus who was raised back to life. Wait, what? You're telling me that someone was dead and they came back to life? Well, not just anyone, the savior of the world, Jesus. Check this out, Whitney. After Jesus was arrested, he was led to the high priest. The religious leaders were trying to find a reason to kill Jesus, but they could not. The high priest asked, are you the Messiah, the son of God? Jesus replied, yes, that's right. The high priest said, he has spoken against God. He deserves to die. The religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus was God's son. In the morning, the religious leaders led Jesus to Pilate, the governor. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Yes, that's right, Jesus replied. What should I do with Jesus? Pilate asked the crowd. Crucify him, they answered. Pilate did not think Jesus had done anything wrong, but he handed Jesus over and said, do whatever you want. The governor's soldiers put a scarlet robe on Jesus. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then they mocked him. Here is the king of the Jews. They beat Jesus and led him away to be killed. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross. They put a sign above his head that said, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified next to him. Darkness covered the land. Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus shouted again and then he died. Suddenly, the curtain in the temple sanctuary split in two from top to bottom and there was an earthquake. One of the men guarding Jesus' body said, this man really was God's son. Jesus was buried in a tomb. A stone was sealed in front of the tomb so that no one could steal Jesus' body. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. An angel of the Lord rolled back the stone and sat on it. The guards were so afraid that they fainted. The angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. The women left the tomb quickly. They ran to tell the disciples the good news. Just then Jesus greeted them. The women worshiped him. Don't be afraid, Jesus told them. Tell my followers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the other disciples. Jesus also appeared to more than 500 people who followed him. Many people witnessed that Jesus is alive. Jesus' death and resurrection is the center of the gospel. In Adam, we were spiritually dead in sin, but Jesus died to pay for our sins. Jesus is alive. God gives new life to everyone who trusts in Jesus. So it turns out Whitney was not right about Easter after all. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's fun to find eggs and to eat chocolate, but the real reason is about Jesus, not the Easter Bunny. Ever since Adam and Eve chose to rebel against God and eat the fruit he commanded them not to eat, all of creation has been broken. People could no longer have a loving relationship with God. For generations, it seemed as though evil might eventually win. And when Jesus died, it looked like evil had actually won. But 
in a wonderful turn of events, God brought Jesus back to life. Jesus was alive, and Jesus' resurrection gives us hope for eternal life. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Mateo from Mola, South Carolina asks, A kid at school said something mean to me. Do I have to forgive him? Mateo, let me just say this first of all. I'm sorry that somebody was mean to you. I know that's hard. Um, we've all been there. Uh, the world is just a sinful place. People are mean. They say mean things, and it hurts. And so, again, I'm just sorry this happened to you. Um, forgiving somebody is hard. Wanting to forgive somebody is hard as well. And so your question is really significant to me and many others who are with you. So let me just kind of speak to this for a minute. Now, the big idea here is, do I need to forgive somebody else? And the answer is, yes, we do. Um, that's what we have to do. God has called us to forgive all others. And let me give you the reason behind this. To, hopefully it makes it a little bit easier to understand, get your arms around, and actually do. You see, when we think about forgiving others, we have to think about how God has forgiven us. That God sent Jesus so that He would die for us to provide forgiveness. And you know what? We were mean to God. We did nothing to deserve God's forgiveness. Um, it's an act of grace alone. And so because of God doing that for us, when we really understand that, when we really start to understand that, man, I don't deserve God's forgiveness, but He gave it to me so freely and abundantly uh, without hesitation. And when I think about how God did that for me, then I should want to forgive others, right? We should want to demonstrate to others what's been given to us. So when you think about this person who said something mean to you and, and understand they don't deserve your forgiveness, but neither do you deserve God's forgiveness, but God gave you His forgiveness, so we should give that other person your forgiveness. That's the way it's designed to work. And so operate from that heart position, that heart posture of saying, you know what? I know this person did something mean. They haven't even asked for forgiveness, but I'm gonna strive to forgive them because God forgave me. And you know what could happen? When your friend sees you forgiving him for being mean, they may see a picture of the gospel. They may see that God is the great forgiver and they may be drawn to him because of your act of forgiveness. So there's something bigger at stake here, isn't that? That's pretty exciting to think about. So I got a question for you. Do you think it's ever okay not to forgive someone? Why or why not? All right, you guys, we're gonna do some Easter egg bowling for our memory verse today. So I'm gonna roll some eggs, throw, roll, something along those lines. However many cups I knock over, and whatever words are on those cups are the words coming out of the verse. Three rounds, are you ready? How many do you think I'm gonna get this time? One, two, three. Oh! Round one, we are taking out that God raised and you will. All right, let's read it together. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, nine. Okay, don't need that one anymore. Let's see, let's go for the purple egg this time. Let me hear your guesses. How many am I gonna get? None. That's not nice. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, two again. We are gonna take out heart and dead. Heart and dead. Let's read it together. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You got one more round, round number three. Let's go for blue egg this time. I think I'm gonna get two. Two seems to be my pattern. Here we go. Oh, only one. One, one, one. In your. Last round, nice and loud, all together. See if we can do it. 
if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. All right, you've been doing a fantastic job with that verse over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think you're finally getting it. And uh, so we're gonna do one more week with that next week and then we're gonna go to a new verse, all right? So keep practicing that at home. But for now, I want you to go grab your Bibles and we're gonna open them up together. Everyone's got their Bible now? Let's open them up to Hebrews chapter 1. We'll read verse 3 together. It says, He reflects the brightness of God's glory and is the exact likeness of God's own being, sustaining the universe with his powerful word. After achieving forgiveness for human sins, he sat down in heaven at the right-hand side of God, the supreme power. Guys, Jesus is amazing. Not only does he show us exactly what God is like, he holds everything together. He came to earth and he paid the price for our sins by dying on the cross. And he rose from the dead on the third day and later ascended into heaven and then sat down at the right hand of God the Father. And he deserves our praise. So let's sing to him now.
I stand in that place For your last meeting face to face I am yours, Jesus, you are mine And it's joy, perfect peace Earthly pain finally will cease Celebrate, Jesus is alive At the beginning of our episode, we asked the question, why is Easter happy? Did you catch the answer? Easter is happy because Jesus' resurrection gives us hope for eternal life. God gives new life to everyone who trusts in Jesus, and that is worth celebrating. Let's pray. Lord God, you are mighty. With your power, you raise Jesus from the dead. We praise you, Jesus, because you have power over sin and death. Help us to remember the cross and the empty tomb every day. When we trust in you, you give us new life. We feel the effects of sin in the world, but we have hope of life with you forever. Give us boldness to share this good news with the world. We love you. Amen. <laughs>